I'm Chopsky, and welcome to Networking 10101, the only show where we force people who still use the term Class C Network to fight to the death for your amusement. We're not doing that anymore? Oh. Should I go again? I get a lot of questions and tales of tech support on Reddit about how to get started in networking. The sad truth is that academically, there is no good way to get started. Even college courses are taught incredibly poorly, resulting in near-useless graduates, myself included. So, I've condensed the last 12 years of my life down to the bare essentials, and now I'm giving them to you. Because God damn it, someone has to. This first episode is going to be an introduction to the core fundamentals of networking. Now you've probably heard the term IP address and MAC address bandied about, but what are they, and how do they actually work? And what is that rash you keep getting behind the basic? First of all, let's get our terminology straight. You have a computer that you want to get online, so you plug in a network cable. The component that lets you do this is called an interface. An interface lets your computer talk to another computer using a network protocol with some sort of addressing. Now, just to be clear, this address does actually belong to an interface, not your computer. They're usually also called NICs, or Network Interface Card, or sometimes a port. But we are going to call them interfaces, because it's technically correct. The best kind of correct. Let's look at a very basic network, much like the one that you have at home. We can ignore subnet masks for now, so in the meantime, everything is 255.255.255.0, which is called a slash 24. We'll cover why that is later, but let's just stick to the basics for now. So, drill this out for me. You should actually do this, because this is going to become the foundation for how you understand what a network actually looks like. So, go and get a pen and paper. It's okay, I'll wait. Go on. Can I, can I go now? So, the PC's NIC has an address of 10.0.0.2 slash 24, and the router's NIC has an address of 10.0.0.1 24. Now, data is transported through the internet in packets. Uh, a packet has a source address, a destination address, and a payload, which is the actual data. So, for the purposes of this, we will actually demonstrate a packet with a ping, something you should all be vaguely familiar with. The packet looks something like this. We've got a graphic for that, right? We don't? Can we make one? So the router receives a packet destined for the IP of one of its interfaces and sees that it's a ping from 10.0.0.2 destined for 10.0.0.1. Hey, that's me, it says. So it replies. It creates a new packet with a source address of its own interface, 10.0.0.1, and a destination 10.0.0.2, with the data being the actual ping reply. The PC that generated this times exactly how long it took. This is your ping time, or round trip time. Quite literally, the time that it takes for that packet to travel to the destination and back. But how did it get there? So this is where the MAC address of the NIC comes in. In order for a ping to actually get from a packet in memory, this, this concept, out into the network, and back up the other side again, it needs to be encapsulated in an ethernet frame. So the entire packet becomes the data component of an ethernet frame. The ethernet frame, similarly, has a source MAC address, a destination MAC address, and the payload, which is the entire other packet. Now these MAC addresses are the hardware of the NIC itself. They are hard-coded into the NIC. This can be changed, but that's a discussion for another day. They're 48 bits long and generally written in hex, so they look something like this. For the sake of understanding this, I'm going to use obviously fake and incorrect MAC addresses, but it should make it easier to track. So the MAC address of the PC's NIC will be all twos, and the router will be all ones. So once it's been handed off to the NIC, it looks something like this. You can see there, there is an entire IP packet that is encapsulated inside of an entire Ethernet frame. Uh, this is the fundamental component of how layering works and how something called the OSI model deals with its respective layers. The router's NIC finds a frame destined for its MAC address and accepts it. So it opens the frame and throws it away, looking at the data. It now has an IP packet. The router realizes the packet is destined for one of its interfaces, 10001, accepts the request. It then turns around and creates the opposite reply. This reply starts as an IP packet, which is then encapsulated in an Ethernet frame. It's basically the same as the other one, except with the source and destination reverse, 
which makes sense because the source and destination are reversed. We're sending it back in the opposite direction. What we can take away from this is that there are two layers involved, an ethernet layer and an IP layer. These layers make up layer two and layer three of the OSI model. This is why you may hear ethernet referred to as layer two and IP referred to as layer three. Remember, layer two has frames, layer three has packets. It's really important not to confuse these and even more important to remember that they have literally nothing to do with each other. Now, computers and the internet do a lot of trickery to make use of each of them for communication, but they are separate. They just work together to provide our complete suite of communications. So let's make our network slightly more complex by adding a switch in in between. So now our network goes PC, switch, router. Switches work by keeping a table of which MAC addresses are out which port. That's it, that's the entire function of a switch. The MAC address table of a switch would look something like this. The first time a switch receives a frame from the PC or from the router, perhaps a DHCP request or auto discovery the local. James, are you... Why are there dogs here? You had one job. Go, outside, go home. Shoot. Come back, out from, out from under the table, out. <sighs> okay, there are dogs. Apparently there are dogs now. The first time the switch receives a frame from the PC or from the router, perhaps a DHCP request, any frame, anything will do. The switch added a source entry for that particular MAC address from the port that it received the frame on. That address is now in the switch's MAC table with port one, address one. Very simple. So now we have a little more detail as to how the packet goes from the software in the PC to the router and back again. PC's OS creates ping data. The PC encapsulates the ping data in a layer three packet with its source address and the destination of where it needs to go. The PC then encapsulates that layer three packet as the data of a layer two frame with a source address of its own and a destination address of where it needs to go. The switch checks the MAC table for which port 1111111 is on and finds one for port 1. The switch then forwards the layer 2 frame to port 1. The router receives the layer 2 frame with the destination MAC of all ones and says, hey, that's me. It decapsulates the contents of the frame, leaving a layer 3 packet. The router's layer 3 processing engine then opens the layer 3 packet with the destination of 10.0.0.1 and says, hey, that's me, and passes the data to the operating system. The router receives a ping request, processes it, creates a reply, which then goes through the same process in reverse. And this is the basic model for communication. Next time, we will move on to all of the support processes around these things that we've talked about today. This includes how we know the MAC addresses and what happens after the packet transits the router. So. That's it for the first video. If you think that this is something that's gonna be useful to you, please feel free to donate and subscribe to the channel for future videos. Or if there's anything that you'd like to see, shoot us a comment or an email and let us know what you wanna learn. We'll see if we can knock something up.